Okay, in this section we're going to be talking about decision analysis and we're going to be looking at, or in this module we're going to focus more on uncertainty. Certainty, of course, you don't need to focus on if you're certain about something, but then risk will be on the last module. So definitely we want to use this decision analysis to improve management decisions based on various environments. So what we're looking at is trying to clarify and enhance our decision-making process. So what decisions are we going to make based on buying um, a certain product, selling a certain product, building at a certain site, expanding, and so on. So we have these decision alternatives. Okay, so these are just our various choices um, or options that the decision maker can make such as maybe expand or uh, rebuild. And then states of nature. These are things that can affect the outcome of your decision, but maybe you have no control, such as the climate. Maybe you decide to build in Florida, hurricane comes through, bad decision, right? Uh, equipment failure, something taxes could go up. Uh, can't, can't always gauge on what the competition is going to do. And then finally, the payoffs, which is our benefit or rewards that result based off of the decision that we actually make. So what we typically have is this decision or payoff table. And on the left side here shows our alternatives. So in this case here, this would be if we wanted to do an investment of $10,000, um, our our, our alternatives are do we invest in stocks, bonds, CDs, or a mixture of more than one. And then the top row shows the states of nature, and in this case, the state of the economy. Okay, so something that, of course, our decision we have no control over. Then the middle of the table, and we'll talk about this later, but these are just given in this case, are the various payoffs depending on um, each, de each decision alternative. So in other words, you know, if you have a stagnant state of economy, CDs going to make 300, uh, going to lose money in stocks, bonds are a mixture. Rapid growth, as you can see, stocks are the way to go. All right, so there's many different strategies um, to be able to look at for decision making under uncertainty. And one's called the Maxi Max, and this is the very optimistic strategy that assumes the best things are going to happen. We're going to pick the maximum overall overall profit. So what you do is you look at each state of the economy. Okay, so we're looking at um, each one of these here, and based on each alternative. So if I look at stocks, I can see the best, in fact, there's a tie here, is 2,200. If I look at bonds, the best is 900. CDs, 750. And then um, alternative mixture, 1,300. So I pick the best out of each alternative, and then I pick the max of the maxes. And so in this case, if I'm being very optimistic, my maxi max is then I am going to assume rapid growth or maximum state of the economy and put my investment in stocks. The maxi min is the pessimistic side. So this is where you assume the worst is going to happen. I want to minimize the damage when it happens. So I select the worst or minimum payoff that can occur. So in other wor words, I want to maximize the minimum damage. And so I do the same thing. I look at each individual row and I find the um, minimum value. So negative 500, negative 100, 300. They're, you know, in this example, they're all in the same column, but they won't, they don't always have to be. And to be able to maximize my minimum, so I find the maximum, which would be $300, which would say if I'm very pessimistic, I probably would just do CDs. This Hurwitz criterion 
is this is where I consider both the best and the worst payoffs. So in other words, it's between the maxi max and maxi min and some type of a weight, which is alpha, not the same as probability type one error, but this is selected as the weight of optimism between zero and one. So of course, the closer you are to zero, more pessimistic you are, the closer you are to one, the more optimistic you are. And you find this value by, let's just show the table here, of finding the maximum payoff, so stocks, multiply it by this alpha. If I, let's say for example, my alpha is 0.7, so I'm being very optimistic. And then plus on this same alternative, I find the lowest, the minimum, and I multiply that times one minus the alpha value. So that's the 0.3. So you see the next one, 900 times the alpha, the minimum times one minus alpha, and so on. And then you sum each one of these and you select the, the largest one. So in this case, um, it looks like stocks because again, I'm being very, <clears throat> I'm being very optimistic would be the one that I picked. Um, regret is based on any lost opportunity. So in other words, you chose the wrong decision. And what we do here is we create a regret matrix. So we pick the highest value. Okay. So in the economy in our, in our state of nature, we pick the highest value in here, which is 300, and then we subtract that, so you can see that here, from each state of the economy, okay? So I subtract each one of these, and we do this for every one of them. So the next one would be 700, would be the highest, and I'd subtract each one from that. The next one, the 2200, and we create this matrix, okay? so. Now that we have this regret matrix based off of this matrix, now I can select the highest from each alternative. So I can see 800, 1300, 1450, and 900. And then I select the max out of those, which would be the 1450. So the um, based off of the, the loss opportunity that I choose the wrong decision, the best thing to do would be the CDs. Um, hopefully the economy has rapid growth. And then finally, the last is Laplace, which is just taking the average payoff in each row. So each alternative and then just selecting the highest. So the next video will actually go through and worked out example using Excel of how to do these.